Hi guys, welcome back to the show. For those of you who are just joining in, we are doing grade 12 physical sciences. Now guys, make sure that you're posting your questions on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash mindset TV. Alternatively, you can use our email, which is questions at learn.co.za. For now, let's get back to Tracy and see what she has in store for us for this segment. Yes, oh, we have chemistry. Oh, we have chemistry, yay. I'm so glad I'm tired of physics now. I know your physics exam is going, coming up, guys, but we've also got to do some chemistry. So we've had some chemistry questions sent in, and so we're going to do some chemistry now, okay? And remember, in the last live show, we actually just did physics, so we need to get to this. So this is such a nice question. Sestros, the relationship between boiling point and the number of carbon atoms, so there's an important thing, boiling point, carbon atoms in a straight chain, Molecule of an alkane, carboxylic acid, and an alcohol is investigated. Three curves, curves P, Q, and R, are obtained. Now, before I look at anything else, okay, when we have a boiling point question, I know they're going to refer to intermolecular forces. Okay, that's a given because this is the physical properties part. So when we look at the intermolecular forces, we've got to decide what they are. And we've got to decide which one will have the biggest, which will have the least, all of that sort of stuff. So if I look at my graph, let's go through what this graph is telling me, okay? So curve P, Q, and R, these must represent alkane, alcohol, or carboxylic acid, okay? It must be one of those three. We will probably have to decide which is which. Maybe they'll tell us, maybe they won't. So now we look at this and we go, okay, if we think about what we know, alkanes, remember, are your bonds that only have single bonds between your carbons. Okay, your alkanes are your simplest organic molecules. Your, alka your alkanes are always nonpolar. Okay, if they're nonpolar, that means they have London forces. Okay. London forces are our weakest. That means if we had to compare a sink like here, your carbon, this where there's one carbon for an alkane to an alcohol or carboxylic acid, methane, which would be that, which would be this one, would be the smallest and would have the weakest intermolecular forces. So that tells me that this first curve, P, that must be the alkanes. Okay, must be. Now I've got to decide between curve R and Q. Now they're very similar. They're not very far apart. And they're actually really nice curves. Because if you look at them, they, they look as if they stay the same sort of distance apart. So this middle part here looks about the same the whole way through, which is actually quite an interesting trend, and I've never seen that before, but it's actually a really nice trend, and it makes a lot of sense to me when I think about what I know about alcohols and carboxylic acids. Now remember, in an alcohol, you have a single, because we're going we're gonna to assume that there's only one alcohol um, group, we have a single OH group, in a carboxylic acid, remember it does this. Now, here, this is really important. It's not about comparing your intermolecular forces, okay? Your alcohols, the back end of the alcohol is nonpolar. We're not going to worry about it. This part here is polar, and because of the OH, can have hydrogen bonds. Okay, so here we know we're going to have hydrogen bonds, okay, oops, and I'm just doing this, really, stop it, hydrogen bonds, nice machine, <laughs> my kids laugh at me oh. when I do that, it's my oh. iPad, it's cool, I have to, you have to be nice to the machinery, it's going to rule the world, okay, so we have hydrogen bonds, now, when we go to the carboxylic acid, we go, okay, the back end, ignoring the OH, double OH, yeah, also nonpolar, we're not going to worry too much about it, but this here is very important because I'm also going to have hydrogen bonds, but because of the nature of your carboxylic acids and this little oxygen here, when the carboxylic acids come together, it actually has two sites for making 
hydrogen bonds. So it doesn't make one, it makes two, okay? It makes two hydrogen bonds because of that O. Plus that O makes it a little bit nonpolar, but we're not going to stress too much about that. But because we've got those two sites for the, for the, non, for the hydrogen bonds, that makes the join between the two molecules stronger. So if the join is stronger, then its molecular forces are stronger, it's going to have a higher boiling point, which means R has to be the acids and Q has to be the alcohols. Okay? I haven't even looked at the question yet. That's just me looking at the graph, going, what does the graph tell me? Okay? Now, we could very easily, if we wanted to, do some naming in this question as well. So, in other words, what is the name of the alkane with only f with five carbon atoms in it? If we really wanted to. Or, another way around, is they could say, what is the boiling point of propanol? Propan-1-ol, or propanol. You would have to go propanol would mean carbon with three atoms in it, it's the alcohol, so I'd have to know it's on Q, and it would be that point over there, which I've just put in purple over here, okay? But let's not worry about that just yet, okay? So first question, define the term boiling point. Oh, man, if there's one definition out of the ones they're going to give, I can pretty much guarantee it's this one. For some reason, they love this definition. Because you will get it wrong. Now, boiling point is not when a substance changes from a liquid to a gas. We describe it as boiling, but that's not it. Boiling point, okay, so this is the first question. Boiling point is, first of all, very important word, the temperature. Have to put in temperature. It is a temperature. Okay, it is the temperature at which a substance's, now watch here, this is important, vapor pressure, okay, is equal to atmospheric pressure. Guys, this is so important. Boiling does not mean it is hot. It simply means that it's going from liquid to gas, absolutely, but it's when vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure, which is why water, if you go up Mount Everest, water can boil at three degrees because the atmosphere gets smaller and smaller and smaller and less and less and less. So as soon as the atmospheric pressure is so low that the vapor pressure equals it, it starts to boil. Okay, so it's a little hard to have hot tea. Yeah. Or coffee. That's why I'm never going to climb Mount Everest. Because I can't have coffee. Though I'm pretty sure it's not good to have coffee on the top of Mount Everest. I don't think so. I, I've got a feeling it would do horrible things. <laughs> okay, so. Now, from curve P, write down a conclusion that can be drawn from the above results. So, if we look at P, let's go over here. Okay, and we go, well... P goes, well, one, two, as the number of carbon atoms increase, what happens to the boiling point? The boiling point increases. Now, be careful here, okay? Because here you tend to want to go, oh, I know. Boiling point is directly proportional to the number of carbon atoms. No, it's not. It's not a straight line. There is a direct proportion without a doubt. So as one increases, the other increases. But I can't say they are directly proportional because if I double, so from one, two to four, I've doubled the number of carbon atoms, but I didn't double the temperature. Okay, so we can't say they're directly proportional. So my conclusion would be, as, now watch, they, I get this from the question, as the number of carbon atoms in the straight chain, because we said they were straight chains, that's important, increases the boiling point 
increases as well. Okay, not so bad. As the number of carbon atoms in the straight chain increases, or increases, not teaching English, the boiling point increases as well. Okay, so next question. Ah, identify the curve that represents each of the following, the alkanes and the carboxylic acids. Oh, wait, we've done that. P is the alkanes, R is the carboxylic acid. So we've done that. So when we go here, okay, no, I've gone too far. That's the next question. It's not scare you straight away. Okay, and we'd number it as it is in the book, but P is the alkanes, and number two, R is the carboxylic acids. Now, so look, oh, I've forgotten how to spell. <laughs> you didn't see that. As you said, you don't teach English. Not at all. My word. Seriously? My, you would think I've been teaching this for ever, and you'd think I'd know how to spell carboxylic. My <laughs> goodness. Okay, you wouldn't have to write in alkanes and carboxylic acids, you just need to you put P and R, okay? My goodness gracious me. Anyway, let's go into the last question that I can do. Now it says, explain your answer to C by referring to, now watch, types of intermolecular forces, relative strengths, and energy needed. Now, we've actually split this question up really nicely in that we've got point, three points that you need to put. They won't do that. They will just, it'll be one sentence, okay? So this is where your highlighters are important. So, what I did earlier here, okay, when I said, can you see when I was doing all of this with the London forces and the hydrogen bonds and the two hydrogen bonds, that's what they want in here, okay? So this is how we do it. Now, I'm not going to write all of it out because we'll be here till Christmas and we don't want to do that. So, and you know what? We don't mind you writing this in point form for us, okay? As long as we can see where you're going to. Also, what happens with a question like this, because it's worth quite a few marks, is if you start writing a paragraph, what happens is you, you guys tend to write in circles. So without realizing it, you tend to say the same thing over and over and over again. And I know we all do that, but when we start marking and you just, you know, we've got this whole long paragraph and we're looking at it and we're like going, okay, and we start reading and you start going in circles, we stop reading. We stop, and well, you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so rather do it in point form, okay? So alkanes have, now watch, have Weak, I'm referring to the strength, London forces. Okay, I've got the type of intermolecular force and the strength. Alcohols, I think I spelled that right, have strong hydrogen bonds. Okay. Carboxylic acids, yeah, I'm going to get this right first time, carboxylic acids, there we go, have strong, now watch what I'm going to do here, because this is the important thing, hydrogen bonds, but have two hydrogen bonds, okay? Therefore, the intermolecular forces, forces are strongest. Okay, so the alcohol has hydrogen bonds, the alkane has weak London forces, the carboxylic acids have strong hydrogen bonds, but have two hydrogen bonds. They need to know that you understand that the difference between the alcohol and the carboxylic acid is the number of hydrogen bonds. You cannot say to me that the carboxylic acids have stronger hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are hydrogen bonds, okay? They're strong regardless, but the more I have, the stronger 
it becomes, okay, that intermolecular force increases, but we're not done yet. I've got the type of forces, I've referred to strength, now I've got to refer to the amount of energy, okay? Now watch here. Therefore, um, A, greater amount of energy, now watch what I'm going to say here, is required or needed to, now watch, weaken, you may not say break, you cannot break an intermolecular force. If you could break an intermolecular force, you'd never find gases. Because gases, those intermolecular forces are very, very weak, but they still exist. Otherwise, gas particles would never stay together. Okay, so we can weaken them, we can overcome them, but we cannot break them, okay? So a great amount of energy is required to weaken the hydrogen bonds. And I know it's lots of writing. In the... Carboxylic acids, the least amount of energy is needed. Least amount. This is why I didn't write essays really well, because my hands write slower than my head thinks. The least amount of energy is needed to weaken the alkanes London forces and by implication the alcohol sit in the middle okay these are not nice questions at all okay so you need to think about what they asked you and you need to go back to your answer and say did I refer to everything they asked so they said refer to the type of intermolecular forces done London hydrogen hydrogen done refer to the strength I said weak London forces strong bonds strong hydrogen done refer to the energy required hang on wait did I do that yes because here stop it be nice to the machine <laughs> There we go. So I said, how much energy is the machine's <laughs> telling me it's time for a break. It's like, don't stop it, stop it. <laughs> okay, it's been a long Monday, just so you know. It's been a long day. So I've referred to everything. I should at least get some marks. Okay, and it's time for a break. Fantastic, guys. That was a lot of information. So I'm going to give you some time to process that, have a glass of water, and then maybe, you know, scribble your notes and see what you can take from that and then we will see you after this break.